all about humanity. And it's that time again. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are coming in from. It is great to see people joining in the chat. I'm Brian, the UK Bitcoin Master. This is your bullish Bitcoin channel. Welcome in, everyone. Today is Monday, the 15th of April, 2024. And if I do something differently and we go here, you will see that we have four days to the Bitcoin halving. Wow. I am so excited about the block reward getting in cut cut in half yet again, people, and you should be too, because if you keep a sense of perspective, if the block reward gets cut in half, but the demand stays the same, which is every chance it's going to, then the price must go up. So things are looking pretty darn exciting. So Welcome in. Like I said, please like uh, the the click the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel, and click all. You'll be notified when I go live, which is every Monday and every Thursday at 6 p.m. UK time. And if you are new, it is so important that you do your own research and don't listen to anything I'm saying, people. Uh, only invest what is right for you if you're going to invest at all. But if you get dig, if you dig down the Bitcoin rabbit hole, I'm telling you, you will not not want to have some of your net worth in Bitcoin. So um, let's get over to the desktop very quickly. I would encourage you all to check out the Orange Pill app if you're not on it already. This is building like mad right now. So much innovation going on on it. If you're not on it and you want to get on it and you want to connect with other Bitcoiners like myself and Natalie Brunel and BCC Sessions and Dr. Saifedina Moose and many of the regular plebs that join this show, then use my link in the show notes and you can get yourself 10,000 free sats. Also in the show notes, is a link to all my social media platforms that you can find me on. So it is well worth going to them and following me somewhere else. This goes out on Rumble. It goes out on BitChute. It's all over the place. So check me out. Uh, quick shout out to the show sponsors, The Best of Exmoor. If you're looking for a fab UK holiday in the West Country of the UK, down in Exmoor National Park, um, fantastic. Uh, everything is rated between 9.5 and 10 out of 10 on TripAdvisor. So fantastic from sleep one night, sleep 20 nights, sleep one, sleep 21. Pet friendly sea resorts right on the coast. It's all over there, people. This is where Exmoor National Park is. You can see it down there. So I would encourage you all just to at least check out, uh, scan the QR code. Uh, he's a Bitcoiner. His name is Chris. You can see top left of this uh, image. It says Bitcoin accepted. So you can pay in Bitcoin for holiday, which I wouldn't do right now. Sorry, Chris. Um, you can pay in crappy currency, which I would do right now. Um, you can also get a discount using my code there if you so choose. So let's see who we have got in my chat. Uh, let's have a wee look. Yeah, pretty quiet tonight. Heaven knows why when we're at 64K. Uh, it doesn't make sense, but hey, I guess some people have got other things to do. They don't want to listen to some crazy Brit ranting on, um, so they go and do something else, and that's okay. Yorkie Bitcoiner, uh, JB Bitcoiner, John G is in the house, Stephen Redding, Manchester. Well, wow, UK, get back over to Florence. It's much nicer over there, I'm sure. Um, Elaine, Mrs. UK is in the house. Uh, Mike Dooley, uh, good to see you. Mike Hey to you as well. MW, good to see you. Bitcoin Meister is in the house. Thanks, Adam. Always good to see you here. Jason Jones, uh, Matthew Underhill. Welcome, everyone. Great to have you all um, in the house. I'm going to get right into it. Um, if you looked at the thumbnail, it was talking about everything is so bullish right now. All the news outlets are just positive Bitcoin where it's going. ETFs springing up everywhere. I think the game theory is really starting to play out. This is the, um, you know, when I say this is not today, not this month, certainly this period of time is the slowly, slowly, and then suddenly part, in my opinion. That was all kicked off on January the 10th by the um, by the ETFs, and now the thing's going crazy all around the world. But here's the thing. How many people were freaking out because the price took a tank? How many people, on the other hand, were buying that 
dip because that's what you should be doing. Hi, Mr. 60. Um, 64K, we were at 74K. So, you know, a nice drop thanks to Iran. We won't go into it, but thanks. Um, Bitcoin is on sale right now. Fit over 1,500 sats for your dollar. So well worth getting some. But how many people were actually freaking out and thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done getting into this thing? I'm hoping nobody on uh, this call. Here's another chart of it. Look at this one. Justin, over 200 million of leveraged Bitcoin and crypto positions liquidated in just an hour. People freaking out everywhere. But let me give you a sense of perspective, if I may. Bram VDB, welcome. Now, have a look at this tweet from Dan McArdle. The bottom is where he tweeted on the 11th of April, 2013, 11 years ago. And then the top one, he says, this 11-year-old tweet was about a drop from 266 to $50 in about a day. We got roasted by everyone, TradFi, media, academics, politicians, etc., for months. Well, guess what? The guy who bought that 266 whatever Pico top is, I don't know, is now up 26,000% if he held. That's a 260-fold increase. Now, I'm showing you this up front because if you have been around Bitcoin long enough, and that doesn't mean in years, it means how much um, proof of work you've done, how much learning you've done about what makes Bitcoin so unique. If you understand the concept of if you can deal with volatility, then you get the upside gains that the majority coming in later don't get when the volatility smooths out. So the volatility is the price that we pay for monumental gains um, and that's what you've got to learn to deal with, which is what we're seeing right now. So 74 to 64. I don't know what that is. Maybe a 20 percent increase, perhaps. I don't know. I'm not good at maths. But my point is stick in. Don't be out of the markets, because as you're going to see from some of the news articles that I'm about to share with you, everything is bullish on where Bitcoin is going. So you've got this one from Crypto Globe. Um, this is Robert Kiyosaki again. Now, you know, he blows hot and cold on Bitcoin. Um, but the point is, he's got a massive following. And when he talks good stuff, I guess a load of people will listen. It says Robert Kiyosaki, author of the best selling personal finance book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, by the way, is an incredible read, I have to say. I read it well over 10 years ago, probably close to 20 years ago. Fantastic book. Um, has reiterated his optimistic outlook on Bitcoin, predicting a price surge to 2.3 million per coin. Now, obviously, no time frame there, and he'd be crazy if he did. Um, Kiyosaki, citing a forecast by ARK Invest CEO Kathy Wood, expressed his trust in her expertise and the potential for Bitcoin's value to reach such heights. He emphasized that regardless of the exact price prediction, individuals should consider their own investment strategy and Bitcoin holdings. If we have a look at his tweet, it said, Kathy Wood... Uh, quarantines that should be guarantees bitcoin will hit 2.3 million per bitcoin do i believe her yes i do kathy wood is very smart i trust her opinion could she be wrong yeah of course she could be so what the more important question is what do you believe what if kathy is right what if what if what if what if the point is what do you believe because if you believe and let me tell you individually what i believe i believe Greatest innovation since humanity ever came into existence in a species. Now, that is not going to be known decades out when maybe I'm not here. and Maybe some of you on the call are not here anymore. But when the history books are written and they look back, this will be the time, the 2020s, when this new innovation gripped hold and started to eat the world. That's what I believe with all the research I've done, all the podcasts I've been on, everything I've done, the books I've read, etc. I absolutely passionately with every fiber in my body believe that. Could I be wrong? Yeah, of course I could. Don't take anything I say as read. Do your own research. You got this one from Crypto Briefing. US Senator sees Bitcoin as solution to credit card fee hike. Processing fees for credit card transactions uh, are on the rise. In this context, Bitcoin provides an alternative payment method that does not incur these swipe fees, said US Senator Marsha Blackburn during a fire chat at the 2024 Bitcoin Policy Summit this week. 
one of the hot tissues on hot tissues issues on Capitol Hill right now is increasing the processing fees for credit cards. And people are beginning to look at how expensive it is to use credit cards. So this, brackets, Bitcoin, provides them another option where they're not burdened with having to pay that swipe fee, said the senator. This is the information that is dripping out there more and more and more regular people are starting to see it, read about it, hear it. And this is where the slowly, slowly can turn into suddenly. And I'm not saying it's going to. I'm saying if you take a broader perspective of all of this, this is how global adoption starts to gather pace and momentum. Vinny Rondo, good to see you. Great to have you on the 21 Million Club at the weekend, Vinny. Uh, Isabella Oh, Draven, I believe I've said that. History being made. Absolutely, uh, Isabella. Thank you for joining us. Smash that like button. What else have we got? Crypto Slate said how Asia's next crypto investment wave will be ignited from these Bitcoin ETFs. On January the 10th, 24, the US SEC approved multiple applications for spot ETFs. On day one, 4.6 billion in shares were traded with cumulative trading volume exceeding the 50 billion mark by February 22. The ETF approval in the US is, is expected to have far reaching impact across Asian markets where investment flows are already significant, especially in institutional investing and picking up pace. So everywhere you look, it is all positive out there, people. And so many people are just missing this because they're, they're thinking of, well, Bitcoin's too expensive. What is the what is the cheap coin that I can get lots more of? Um, you know, because maybe I've missed a boat on Bitcoin. No, you have not, people. Here's my take again. Just personal opinion, not financial advice. And that is this. There is only one winner in the money stakes. There's only one coin that has any possible chance of being the future money of the world, and that is Bitcoin. Now, I'm not going to go into the whys and wherefores of all of that, but when you know, you can't unknow it. When you've done the research, when you understand the network effects that Bitcoin has got, you know, there is no founder you know, there is no pre-mine where people that got in first got large chunks and shares of it all. This is truly immutable, decentralized, unconfiscatable, crosses all borders globally. Da, 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 da. This is the place to be, even if you buy yourself 100,000 sats. Right now, a dollar will get you 1,566, actually 1,546 sats. So if you've got $10, you can get 15,000 Satoshis. And if you've got $100, you can get 150,000 Satoshis and start building up your Bitcoin position over time is what I would suggest. Now, here's a bit of news that you may have heard, you may not have heard, but, you know, kudos to Peter McCormack. Um, he, yeah, he runs his What Bitcoin Did channel and it's one of his sponsors is Gemini, the shit coiners, never the... Oh, I swore. That's not like me, is it? Um, poop coiners. Um, nevertheless, these guys are billionaires, one of the first Bitcoin billionaires, and they've now decided to invest $4.5 million into Peter McCormick's little football club over here in the UK. Um, if you're not aware of why I'm covering this, because um, you had Ryan Reynolds, the blockbuster actor in the US, came over and bought um, a little football club called Wrexham, um, he, that his and his partner's goal was to invest money and to bring Wrexham back into the the normal, you know, football football league, which I believe he's now done, and move them up the rankings to the Premier League. And Peter McCormack has got this is only a tiny little club, but you know he's got a goal of you know building this up over time, going up nine tiers uh, from where he is now and getting. Uh, Bedford, Real Bedford into the Premier League. Now, most people go, you're crazy, you're nuts, you haven't got a chance. I can tell you now, the people that are behind this club, okay, were many of them, the big hitters from the US, Preston Pish was there, um, Lynn Alden, um, American Hoddle, and many others came over for this weekend to his cheat code conference. Um, they watched his um, football team play at home on Saturday, 
So there's a lot of people with money getting behind this thing, which is massively excited. And kudos to Peter McCormack. He says here, a non-league football club has received an injection of, of 4.5 million, three, six million pounds um, from a pair of cryptocurrency investors. Rail Bedford received the Bitcoin investment from the Winkle Vos. Winkle Voss Capital, an investment firm owned by Gemini, Gemini founders Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss. I won't read it all out to you, but massively exciting and well done to Peter for having the vision to say, I'm going to buy this club and I'm going to do what I need to do within Bitcoin. I'm going to get backers and over time, I'm going to do everything I can to make this club move up the rankings. I'll take my hat off to him. Well done, Peter McCormack, whatever you think of him. OK, BTC Times uh, on X, they tweeted the IMF continues pushing for charge changes to El Salvador's Bitcoin law during a 1.4 billion loan negotiation or loan negotiations, I should say. And whatever your views are on El Salvador, whatever your views are on Bukele, um, that doesn't matter. The point is the IMF are still leaning down on this country that decided to adopt Bitcoin as their currency. And, you know, again, I think as we look back in history, we will see El Salvador being that country that took the initiative and started the process and then other countries followed uh, obviously over time. So keep pushing um, back on the IMF because they're corrupt. They're just, oh, I won't say scammers because they're not, but it's horrible. Okay, from the block, Hong Kong to approve spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs as soon as Monday, which is today, said Bloomberg. Haven't looked at the news, so can't uh, confirm whether that has happened, whether it hasn't. Obviously, Hong Kong is Asia, so different timeframes, etc. Um, but they said Hong Kong regulators are expected to green light spot ETS for both Bitcoin and Ethereum as early as Monday, Bloomberg reported, citing sources familiar uh, with the matter. So that's another shoe to drop. That is another, I won't say nail in the coffin, that's the wrong way around, but that's another um, I don't know, a flag put down as Bitcoin expands around the world. And if you're not feeling that and you're not getting that, you're not down the rabbit hole, people, because when you are down the rabbit hole, you can just feel it and it gives you a sense of calm. And, and I've said this a lot of times and I'll say it again. You know, when Bitcoin drops as it's done, 10K, for me personally, for my wife and I personally, it's just a great big yawn because Bitcoin's doing what it does. It has to correct. And if you think you can get into Bitcoin and it's just going to go green, 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 green. No, it has to go up, then consolidate. Then it liquidates some of the longs that have, you know, bet that the thing is going to the moon and it liquidates them and millions and billions disappear, etc., etc. And then it consolidates and then it goes again. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but that is what has always happened. And when you learn that proof of work again, then you are pretty chilled out when the thing drops. Now zoom out a minute. Just imagine it's 700,000k and then it drops the same percentage and it drops then back to 640k. You know, 60,000 in a day instead of 10,000. Do you know what I mean? It's like you just got to do the proof of work otherwise you will not have the conviction to be zen when this thing bounces around like it does. MSB ETH, Mike, always good to see you. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Okay, so what else have we got? So X, again, this is Bitcoin news, a little bit more about Michael, uh, um, Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, question, um, will you buy the Bitcoin ETF? Answer, no. Just as I don't own gold or silver ETFs or REITs, real estate ETFs. I am an entrepreneur and prefer to stay as far away from Wall Street's financial products as possible, said Robert Kiyosaki. And that, if you can, is the way to go. Don't be scared of learning how to self-custody your Bitcoin because at least you then own it. Because if Wall Street own it and there's some kind of clamp down or they do something which we don't like within the ETFs, you can't get your Bitcoin out, people. All you can do is dump that in for cash and you get the cash out. It is not your Bitcoin. It is an IOU for your Bitcoin. Whereas if you're holding it yourself and you learn self-custody, 
then you are self-sovereign. And that's the thing you must learn. If you want to go down the ETF route, be my guest. I'm not. I'm with Robert Kiyosaki here, 110%. I saw this one on LinkedIn. Imagine owning physical gold coins that can be never be counterfeited. These coins can also be divvied up into any denomination and sent instantly across the internet for basically free. Also, you can hold them in your head without anyone's knowledge. That's basically what Bitcoin is. If anything, Shifty P is a fake or failed risk manager for ignoring contrary evidence for years on end. Yeah, he is doing his clients a massive disservice just to protect his gold fund, which he wants flipping well shooting for. Rocky, welcome. So, um, yeah, absolutely crazy, but it continues. Again, how long do you go down the wrong road before you finally realize you're on the wrong path and get onto the right path. He's going to go down that wrong road to oblivion. I can feel it. He's just not humble enough to say, hey, I made a big mistake. Uh, now I see that Bitcoin is the future. It's the fastest horse in the race, said Lawrence Lepard, another gold bug who has seen the light and has at least got on the right road. Him? No, he's protecting everything he's got because of his uh, gold fund. Uh, Mickey Koss, again on LinkedIn, countries dropping like dominoes in the face of Bitcoin incentive structures, which is everything I've been talking about over the last 20 minutes. I'm not sure if this time is different, but it certainly feels like it. And that is in response to this article from Bitcoin magazine. 900 billion DWS launches physical Bitcoin ETC in Germany. Hong Kong, Germany, Australia, the UK are launching an ETN on the 28th of May. Interesting date, my birthday. Um, so it's all, all happening, but most people are not paying attention to it, but I am. And if you want to know if you really are in the right boat, you've only got to look at this that Sailor's tweeted again, and he does it regularly. There is no second best. Look at Bitcoin compared to the S&P, NASDAQ, gold, silver, bonds, if you were looking to increase your family's wealth, what horse would you rather be in here, people? No like button again. Hmm. Has everybody else got a like button? Hope so. If not, put something in the flipping chat. Um, yeah, I don't know why you haven't got a like button, Rocky. Anyway, so, you know, what I'm trying to say here, people, is if you do the research, if you do the work, you will see, oh, Isabella doesn't have a like button either. That is really strange. I have people I've got no clue. I've got another monitor running here. Let me see if there's a like button here. That is really weird. Hold on. Yeah, I've got a like button on my monitor here. I have no idea. Sorry, peeps. Anyway, I'm in the middle of the show, so I can't change that. But please do me a favor at least at the end of the show, refresh your browser and go back in and then hit the like button, please. I would really appreciate that because those likes are just so important. Yeah, Mike's got one. Elaine doesn't have one. That is so weird. Is that YouTube doing stupid things again? Who knows? Okay, so if you haven't quite got Bitcoin yet, you know, I can see you all in the chat. Stephen Redding's got one. It must be YouTube. I don't know, or the browser you're using, I'm not sure. Um, here's a thought for you with this next one. If you don't understand why the power is in holding Bitcoin, and you've probably all heard this or seen this before, but let me bring it right to the front of your consciousness. Have a look at this. Look at how many Bitcoin you would need to buy a house in 2016 for 288 grand. Now, we're talking to the same house with inflation, 434 now, but six. 164 Bitcoin in 2016, 45 Bitcoin in 2020, and 6.6 .6 Bitcoin in 2024. The point of that, if you hold your wealth in Bitcoin, everything is getting cheaper and cheaper over time. If you hold your wealth in crappy fiat, everything is going to get more expensive over time. Johnny Midas, welcome. Good to see you in the house. Um, so hold it in Bitcoin, people. Learn about it and you'll understand why it is better to hold your family's future wealth um, in 
Bitcoin. And here's a great tweet to pull that lot together from Toma B. Why is it so hard for some people to understand the use case of Bitcoin? It is money they can't confiscate or control, money that doesn't require permission to use, money that can't be created out of thin air, literally takes four minutes to figure this out. Do the work. We'll leave it there. And I'll say it again. If you don't do the work, you will sell your Bitcoin at a million dollars to BlackRock, who knows it's going to 10 million. And that's what you've got to consider. Listen to Sailor again, and I'm not putting him on a pedestal, but he's got it right in my opinion. And that is, if you're going to sell Bitcoin, which is the hardi hardest asset humanity's ever seen, which is going to go up over time to infinity, Laura, right? What are you going to sell it for? A fiat currency that's debasing every year, 10 or 15%. What are you going to sell it for? You just, well, hang on, hold out until you can buy more and more things with Bitcoin because you're getting richer over time and your goods are getting cheaper over time. So it just, I, I, for me personally, we, it makes no sense to me at all to sell Bitcoin into crappy fiat that's debasing when by holding my Bitcoin, it is going to create more value for me over time. Just, I don't, I don't get it. So that's just my take. That's just my rant on my show. And I hope you're okay with all of that. But please do the research. Okay. Uh, oh, Glenn McCann, good to see you. Ireland in the house. Pound the like button. For some reason, some people have got a like button, some people haven't. So please go into the show afterwards and click the like if you, if you can't do it now. I would really appreciate that. Video of the day. Um, again, you know, you don't need to listen to me. What the hell do I know? You know, but I would say that somebody that's built um, a business to a billionaire status, maybe they're worth listening to if they're beating the drum about Bitcoin. Now, we could go sailor, couldn't we? We could go Wensaris from Mexico. We could do that as well. We could do Bill Miller. Uh, we could do Tim Draper. Okay. Oh, this one's Tim Draper. Just listen to what he had to say uh, when he was interviewed recently by an Australian podcaster. And I'll let him speak. You know, if you're an investor in the stock market, they say, don't bet against the Fed. Yep. yep. If you're a Bitcoin buyer, don't bet against the halving. <laughs> yep. That thing... That changes everything. By the way, sorry, for those that are relatively new and don't know who Tim Draper is, he's a venture capitalist, he's a billionaire, but he actually bought, don't quote me, something's telling me 250,000 Bitcoins um, from the sale of Mount Gox, or when they he got Mount Gox coins, I believe, when that went down, or Silk Road or something, and he bought them really, really cheap, and he's been holding them ever since. I continue. The supply shrinks, the demand increases. It's... The price goes up. That's natural economic supply and demand. Yep. Every time there's a halving, which used to be called a halving, yep. every time there's a halving, um, we're going to have a, a, a reduction in supply. And when you have a reduction in supply, there will be more demand. There will be a higher price. That, in general, will keep happening. I was um, with a bunch of my friends, and Bitcoin was, I think, 7,000? And, um, and I said to them, actually, it may have been 700. Um, and I said to them, look, just put 2% of your net worth into this thing. Something's going to happen here. It's going to be worth, may, maybe worth nothing, but it may be like transformative to the global economy. Yep. So you may want to have some. And um, none of them took me up on my suggestion. And so it's not just I would us. expect the exact same thing to happen to anybody that you're, that you're viewing audience. That they, if they haven't bought Bitcoin by now, are they going to? Are they ever going to? Or, or are they going to just be a part of the people who are clawing at the bank to try to get their dollars out and try to get Bitcoin for it? I think if you if you haven't bought some Bitcoin by now, um, I mean, I think you should. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I the future I see is one where if you don't have some to take care of yourself when the dollars become worthless. There's going to be a hole in your in your life. I think when I can buy food, clothing, shelter, and pay my taxes all in Bitcoin, I don't need any more dollars, and I will get rid of all of them. And I think that will be true of everyone. And they, they're just it's just starting to dawn on people, and it's just starting to dawn on the retailers that they should be accepting Bitcoin and eventually only accept Bitcoin. But there will be a moment in time, and I don't know whether it's a day or a month, 
or maybe over the course of two months or something. But, and I don't know when it will start, whether it'll be a year or five years or whatever, maybe even 10 years out. But it'll happen very rapidly. It will, because I think it's going to be better for the world yeah. to be operating in a trusted currency, yep. in a trusted system, system not tied to political forces. Um, so I actually think that it, it will be a really good thing. So, you know, you don't need to listen to me. What I do twice a week is just jump live on YouTube and rant for a bit, and hopefully somebody will take some notice of me and do their own research, which is what I've always said. So I'll pop up this again, do your own research. And that's all I do is research. And that research from knowing nothing about Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies in 2017 when I got the phone call um, to nearly seven years on next month, um, if you do that research you will find yourself going deeper and deeper down that rabbit hole of, you know, learning about what makes this asset so scarce, so special, and you will want to hold some, I promise you. So uh, there you go. Let's go back to the desktop. Um, I love quotes. I found this one. Uh, Hemingway said, uh, nothing to do with Bitcoin, but it's, it's uh, you know, a wise quote. Before you talk, listen. You know, we've got two of these and one of these, and we really should use them in that proportion. Before you react, think. Before you spend, this is a good one, earn. Before you criticize, wait. Before you pray, forgive. And before you quit, try again. I think that's a really fantastic quote. I really do. Stacking Richie, good to see you. Um, if you want to support the show and you really don't have to, I keep saying this on every show, um, you can send some sats. There's four sats addresses. You can buy me a cup of coffee with crappy fiat from anywhere in the world, by the way, using that QR code. But again, you don't have to. I have not monetized the show. I am not looking for money to do my shows, but people have reached out to me and said, how are we supposed to drop you a tip? You haven't monetized your YouTube. I don't intend to monetize YouTube. I did not build the channel so that I could build a revenue stream from it. I just decided I've just got such a passion for Bitcoin. I wanted to go live twice a week and build an audience. And that's all I'm trying to do. So that's it, people. We're done. Um, if you remember what I showed you at the start, we have four days into the halving. And when I next do my show on Thursday, it will be, depending on what happens with the blocks, one day to the halving. So it will be the day before the halving, which is massively exciting. So uh, looking forward to doing Thursday's one purely because I can rant about we're one day out from the next Bitcoin halving. So again, thank you all for joining. There's more viewers than there are likes, and there's probably a reason for that. Some of you haven't got a like button. Whoa, Mad Mado Satoshist. Have I butchered that? Good to have you in the house. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, I don't know why you want to come and listen to me, but people do, um, which is really nice. I do appreciate it. So I'm going to leave, you, leave it all there. I'm going to say have a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Please like this. Please share it, retweet it, do all those things. Isabella, uh, you are so welcome. Come back again soon. Um, Share me where you're listening if you're on the podcast. This goes out across all the Apple, Google, all those podcasts a couple of hours after this is aired once I edit it. So share me there. Please do go back into the show after it's uh, the live stream has ended and leave me a comment, good or bad, because then it helps mess with the YouTube algorithm and it stays current on Google searches for longer. Uh, because my goal, my passion here is to save just one other person from not going down the scam coin route and getting absolutely wrecked. That's why I do this. So you can help me by going in and leave me a comment. That's it. I'm done. I'm going to leave you as I always do with a bit of cheesy music and my social media links. I'm Brian, the UK Bitcoin master. This was your bullish Bitcoin show. I'm out of here. Come and join me on Thursday, 6 p.m. London. Catch you all then. Ta-da for now.